can have fun also. <laughs> Join us Thursday at 7. Now, every family has stories that tell the history of their family, and at the same time, those stories reveal some of the values of the family, the values that family members come to live by. And I'm going to share three stories this morning, well, the three I can share in public, around the dinner table that illustrate some of the values my family taught me to embrace. My great-great-great-grandmother, Augusta Maud Butler, was married to Charles Pillsbury of Minneapolis in the early 1800s. Augusta Maud decided she didn't want to be a Pillsbury anymore, so she divorced Charles in the middle of the 19th century and moved to Hartford, Wisconsin, where she met my great-great-great-grandfather, Charles Amadon. The value I learned was to be happy and independent in spite of the cost. My grandfather, Alfred Lohr, worked a farm outside of Hartford during the Farm Great Depression that began in the 1920s. His wife, Irene, died during childbirth, giving birth to her fourth child when my mother was four years old. Now, Alfred lived on the farm and raised the two oldest children, and life was never easy. Money was always scarce. But even when money was tight, if Alfred had a dollar in his pocket the day before the milk check was to arrive, he went downtown to the bakery to buy a blueberry pie. The lesson I learned was abundance. Even when we feel poor, we can have something in life that reminds us that life is abundant. Having treats is important because it reminds us to choose abundance. The last story, my mother's best friend was named Lizzie Gutchenritter, and yes, that's her real name. <laughs> and my mom and Lizzie Gutchenritter loved pranks. So in the library, the high school library at the school Lizzie and my mom attended, they would sit and unscrew the heavy wooden table leg and lay it across their laps and keep the table up on their knees. Well, every once in a while, they jiggle it just for fun. <laughs> and at the end of the class, when they stood the table and the leg would clatter to the floor, and my mom and Lizzie would dissolve into laughter. <laughs> now, naturally, they got into trouble, but seeing as my grandfather, Albert, was on the school board, nobody seemed to mind too much. <laughs> my mom would get home, and he'd say, got another call from the principal. Then he'd start laughing. The lesson I, lesson I learned was, don't let rules get in the way of having fun or doing the right thing. Yeah, now doesn't that seem to fit those of you who know me? <laughs> I suspect each person here this morning has a family story that shares your family history and some of the values by which you were raised. These stories shape our thinking, even when we're sitting around the dinner table rolling our eyes, wondering why we have to hear that story one more time, those stories shape our thinking. The Bible is filled with stories that share some of the history of our faith ancestors. Those same stories teach us the values of our faith, what we believe is important, because it affects how we think, speak, and act. The story told this morning is the story about the day Joshua led the Hebrew people across the Jordan River to the Promised Land. Now at this time of the year, the Jordan River was in flood stage. Now today, so much water has been siphoned off of the Jordan River for irrigation by the nations around it, that by the time you get to the end of the stream where it runs into the Dead Sea, it's pretty much just a tiny little stream. But in those days, at flood stage, the river was wild and it bucked over its banks, and for looking at it with the rapids that involved, it seemed nigh unto impossible to cross. But Joshua told the priests with him to pick up the box carrying the Ark of the Covenant, that is the Ten Commandments of God, and take a couple of steps into the river. Now we know today from the news broadcast, you don't go into any fast-moving river that's more than three or four inches deep. It's going to carry you away, but these priests listened to Joshua, and took a couple of tiny steps into the river. As soon as their toes touched the water, the river stopped and piled up the water so that Joshua and the Hebrew people could cross the riverbed on dry land. 
Now, once they got across, Joshua told the tribal leaders to take 12 large stones, large rocks that were in the riverbed, and place them in a circle in the middle of the Jordan River. Now, most of us know that a circle of stones, a circle of rocks, is not found in nature. So when the grandparents, the parents, the great-grandparents would bring their children back to see that place where their people had crossed into the Promised Land, the children would notice that circle and say, what's, what's going on? What are those stones about? And their parents, their grandparents, their great-great-great-great-great-grandparents could say, those stones remind us of the day that God stopped the water so we could cross into the Promised Land. Those stones remind us that God is faithful. God walks with us. God protects us, and God always brings us home. Now, that's got to sound like another story we know from the Bible. Which one? Red Sea. Yeah, Moses leading the Hebrew people across the Sea of Reeds or the Red Sea, which was the first step of the Hebrew people going home to the Promised Land. God stopped the waters and the people walked across dry land. The stories we read in the Bible today are the stories that tell of our faith history. They're the stories that share the values of our life, and they are the stories that have, were told about the campfire 4,000 years ago. For 4,000 years, our ancestors in faith have been telling stories to one generation after the next, after the next, so that each generation would know to believe that God is faithful, God walks with us, protects us, and always brings us home. So every time we baptize a child, every time we baptize an infant or an adult, we are making a promise to teach them the stories of our faith. I've just got to pause. Isn't it wonderful to hear children in worship? Yeah. Sunday school is the church. I think one of our youngsters said that before. Sunday school is the church. That child is the church. Okay, back to our story. So, every time we baptize a child, every time we send a child down the hall to Sunday school, we are promising that we are going to share the stories of our scripture so that they will know our faith history, they will know our faith values. And the stories of our Bible that have been told for 4,000 years are the stories we still need to tell today. They are the stories that need to be told over and over and over again until every child, every person we know, understands how faithful our God really is. The stories that are most important the most real for us are those with those stories that tell why we believe in God. Those stories that tell why we have turned out the way we have. The stories that reveal the values that we have come to know and love. The stories of the Bible that talk about God's love and compassion Jesus and God's promise to walk with us, to protect us, the stories that remind us we will always get brought home again. Those are the stories we need to tell over and over and over again so that every friend, every child, every family member, everybody we know gets sick of hearing them because those are the stories that are going to stick. Those are the stories that our children will remember. The stories will, will, will guide how they think, act, and speak. I'm pretty sure none of the stories I just told you this morning are going to last 4,000 years. I'm pretty sure they're, bless you, I'm pretty sure they're not going to make it to the next generation. They've got their own set of stories that I'm telling them about their parents. But the stories in the scripture are the stories that have lasted, and they've lasted for a reason. The challenge for us today is to decide to choose a story out of the scripture that explains why we trust God, that explains why we bother with organized religion when so much of the world does not. That story for me is found in Luke's 15th chapter, the story about the lost coin, the lost sheep, and the 
prodigal kid. Because it reminds me that no matter how many times I deliberately or unintentionally get lost, God comes to find me. No matter how many times I deliberately or unintentionally wander away, I can come to my senses and God is always there waiting patiently. No matter how many times the church has gotten lost, and we are a flawed human organization and we get lost, God comes to find us. No matter how many times the church intentionally or deliberately wanders away from God, God waits patiently until the church comes to its senses and comes home again. Those are the stories that explain why I love God, why I believe God is faithful. But the challenge is for each of us to come up with our stories, the stories that explain to us, so that when we have the opportunity to sit down with our kids, when we have the opportunity to talk to our friends or our neighbors, when we have the opportunity to interact with the kids at the grocery store line who are ready to pitch a fit. Anybody familiar with those moments? When those kids are ready to go off the deep end, we can say, hey, I got a story to tell you. And those are the stories that change lives. Those are the stories that are the stone foundations that form the circle for our own personal foundation. Those are the stories that we can pass from one generation to the next to the next so that the stories of the Bible last for another 4,000 years. The challenge for us today is to find the story for our own lives. For each and every one of us, by the time we get to sundown, to have a story, whether it's the same one we keep for forever, but the story for today that is our story that explains how we trust that God is our God and we are God's people. And we know, we know that God walks with us, protects us, and will always bring us home. Because those are the stories that change lives. Those are the stories that are the stones of our life foundation. We've got to tell the stories, friends. Amen. Amen. Amen.